People love a good fight. Well, the one we're going to tell you today has to be the biggest fight in history, both metaphorical and literal. Hello everyone, welcome to Monster Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2021 action monster film, Godzilla vs. Kong. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The film opens with a shot of Kong as he wakes up on Skull Island and collects his food before fashioning a spear from a nearby tree. He suddenly roars and throws the spear towards the sky, only for it to land on what looks like a force field. Kong then roars up at the sky as the damaged part of the dome flickers and notifications start beeping all over the lab that the dome has been breached. It turns out that Kong isn't really on Skull Island. Rather, he's being kept on another island where Monarch has built a large dome which mimics the scenery of Skull Island. Dr. Eileen Andrews, a Monarch scientist, is studying Kong, and she's formed a bond with Gia, a deaf child from the Iwi tribe whose family was drowned by a tidal wave and is now being cared for by Eileen. Eileen's aide comes to her as she says that the dome isn't going to hold up for much longer, to which the man replies that they need to start thinking of off-site solutions. Eileen responds that the island is the only thing that has kept Kong isolated, and without it, Godzilla will be able to track him, as there cannot be two alphas. The man insists that the current environment is too unstable, as Gia comes to Eileen and tells her that Kong is angry. She tells her in sign language that she should go wait for her in the car. As Eileen gets up to leave, she tells her aide that taking Kong anywhere would be a death sentence. It's been five years since Godzilla defeated King Ghidorah and claimed the title of Titan King. Following the disaster, a new business organization named Apex Cybernetics, founded by Walter Simmons, has stepped in to assist reconstruct civilization. Bernie Hayes, a former Apex employee, hosts the Titan Truth podcast, where he discusses his views about the company's covert operations. He says that this may be the last podcast he records, and after working at the company, he's sure that something is not right there, and he's got hard evidence to support his claims. The shots then move to Bernie walking towards a huge plant. Suddenly, an ad starts playing where Walter Simmons talks about the purpose of Apex Cybernetics, and how the company is going to be beneficial for humanity in the future. So, as Bernie walks in, he sees a coworker eating an apple and tries to stop him, telling him that it's unhealthy. The coworker just responds that Bernie isn't supposed to be here, Bernie then starts blabbering on about how he made a new hand sanitizer, and then pulls out a small component from the toaster and starts discussing its specifications with the man, who excuses himself to go to the bathroom in an effort to get away from Bernie. In reality, this was all a ploy from Bernie as he sits on the man's computer and starts copying classified data from the computer. He comes upon some sensitive information when suddenly alarms go off, warning of a Titan attack. Then we see shots of what looks like a supercharged, angry Godzilla heading towards the plant. All the employees are evacuated to shelters, as Walter Simmons and one of his associates gets on a private chopper. Meanwhile, two fighter jets fly out to intercept Godzilla. They fire rockets, but they prove ineffective, and Godzilla swats them out of the sky. At the shelter, Bernie is stopped by two security personnel, who are about to shoot him but get killed by an explosion. As Bernie gets up from the wreckage, he spots what appears to be a core reactor concealed below. Outside, Godzilla uses his nuclear blasts to destroy more of the city and the facility. Later, news reports blare how Godzilla attacked the city and a titan, which was previously thought to be a hero, turned on humanity. We are then taken to somewhere in the US, where Madison Russell, a high school student, hears about Godzilla's rampage. Everyone assumes he isn't as heroic as he appears. She goes to tell her father, Mark, who is now collaborating with Monarch more closely. Madison believes Godzilla isn't naturally violent, but Mark believes he has succumbed to his terrible inclinations. Her father says that the podcast is filling her head with garbage, and that she should focus on school. Madison continues to say that they know Godzilla is good, and how he saved them earlier, but her father says that the facts speak to the contrary, and that he just wants his daughter to stay safe. She listens to Bernie's podcast on a daily basis, and overhears him state that whatever is going on with Godzilla is due to the Pensacola facility. Walter pays a visit to the former monarch scientist Dr. Nathan Lind with Ren Surazawa, Ishiro's son, at Denham University in Philadelphia. They contact Nathan about his hollow earth idea after detecting an energy pulse from a probable hollow earth habitat. They say that his book was impressive, but Nathan replies that he's got about 30 unsold boxes. 
Walter then says that this meeting is of some urgency, as Godzilla hasn't attacked unprovoked before. They then show him a magnetic image of the Earth, which proves Nathan's hollow Earth theory. Walt shows him that there's an immense energy source on the Earth, and he wants to use the power from that location to combat Godzilla. Nathan's brother was killed while on an expedition to this place. They then ask Nathan about what really went wrong on the mission, and Nathan tells him that he tried to enter the portal to the hollow Earth, but the gravity was inverted, which crushed them in an instant. Walter then shows him a high-tech vehicle that can safely transport him and his crew to the location. He offers Nathan a chance to lead the mission, and motivates him by saying that this could be their only chance against Godzilla. Nathan then starts talking about how he has an idea that could allow him to get there, and he might get some help from a colleague. So Nathan seeks out Eileen, a former colleague, in order to persuade her to enlist Kong's assistance in locating the Hollow Earth source. She's hesitant to do so, believing that Godzilla and Kong's ancestors previously battled in a great war and that history may repeat itself. She also doesn't believe in the Hollow Earth theory and that she's not letting him take Kong halfway across the world to be used as a weapon. But Nathan assures her that he wants to take Kong as an ally and that this could be their only chance to stop Godzilla. So Eileen agrees to go. So they tranquilize Kong and the journey begins. He's transported aboard a convoy ship, which is guarded by a fleet of warships. On the ship, they're made aware that they have come, and it turns out to be Walter's daughter, Maya. She joins the crew to ensure that the operation goes smoothly. Kong also wakes up, but he doesn't seem agitated or annoyed, and is sitting peacefully on the boat. Nathan introduces himself, and Maya tells him about the anti-gravity vehicles that they're loaning them. Later that night, the fleet is caught in a rainstorm, as Nathan tells the crew that they'll be in Antarctica in 48 hours. He also shows them the path which they're going to use to get into the hollow earth, and how once inside, Kong will be able to lead them to the power source. Nathan also describes how it will feel to enter into hollow earth, and he compares the experience to bungee jumping, provided that the cord is tightened to the lower intestine. But then he reassures everyone that if Maya's vehicles are actually up to the mark, then they'll have no problems. The captain of the ship tells Eileen that they have avoided Godzilla's territory and asks her if he has reason to be concerned. She tells him that according to myth, the Titan's ancestors used to fight, and Kong bows to no one. Meanwhile, Gia is lying asleep in bed. But she's woken up, and when she goes out, she discovers Kong yelling in English. The other members of the crew are made aware of the situation, and Eileen dashes outside and learns from Gia that Kong understands and communicates in sign language, and she knows he doesn't trust the crew to look out for his best interests. Madison enlists the help of her buddy, Josh, in her search for Bernie. They find his residence thanks to a tip from a man at a local convenience shop. Bernie only speaks to them once he discovers Madison's mother's identity. Then, he explains his conspiracy theories to Madison and Josh. Madison believes that Apex did something to incite Godzilla to strike. Bernie informs them about a significant shipment of merchandise on its way to Apex, as well as the technology he spotted earlier. Meanwhile on the ship, the crew feeds Kong fish, while Eileen questions Gia about why she didn't inform her that Kong could communicate, and Gia responds that Kong didn't want them to know. Godzilla then makes an appearance, and makes his way toward the convoy, smashing into them and forcing the ship to flip over. Kong is let free from his shackles, and pursues the huge lizard. Kong manages to land a few strong blows, and throws Godzilla back into the sea. But then Godzilla opens his huge maw, and fires a blue flame toward the sky, destroying the ship and causing Kong to fall into the water. Godzilla takes advantage of the situation, and drags Kong underneath with his tail, nearly drowning him. To confuse Godzilla and free Kong, the team uses depth charges. This provides Kong with the opportunity to escape. Eileen instructs the convoy's captain to kill the power in order for Godzilla to believe he is one and be able to escape. Kong then gets back on the ship and then falls unconscious. After the crew cuts the power, Godzilla leaves, but Kong and the rest of the crew have to be flown to their final location. Meanwhile, Bernie goes to the decrepit Pensacola facility with Madison and Josh, but when they get to the bunker, they discover that the core is missing. After that, the three locate an elevator that would transport them beneath. They uncover a room housing the skull crawler pod, but the chamber is scooped up and brought to Hong Kong before they can escape. In Antarctica, the group discovers the source of the energy signal. Gia persuades Kong to enter a tunnel through which he has obtained the energy source, since it may lead to his home. Kong directs the group to the tunnel, which leads to a portal where gravity is reversed. 
they discover Hollow Earth, which is home to a slew of additional giants. When Kong and his crew are attacked by winged monsters, he grabs hold of them and smashes one into the soil. Another tries to choke and suffocate him, but Nathan's spacecraft shoots at it, allowing Kong to break it apart and even eat from its skull. The trio ends up at the Hong Kong Apex facility, where they learn what Walter and Ren have really been working on, a monster that is superior to Godzilla, that will put an end to humanity's titan problem, Mecha Godzilla. Walter puts it to the test on an unfortunate skull crawler in front of the three. Ren is also discovered to be operating Mechagodzilla via a telepathic bond with one of Ghidorah's skulls. Apex guards eventually catch and detain the three. Meanwhile, the crew journeys further into Hollow Earth and discovers Kong's ancestral house. He discovers his family's throne room and sits on it like a proper king, wielding an axe crafted from a spike from Godzilla's forefathers' backs. The ground's energy source is activated by the axe. Despite Nathan and Eileen's protestations, Maya sends out Apex spider drones to obtain a sample of the source for her father to exploit. Bat monsters descend from above and assault Kong and his crew, but Kong fights them off. Godzilla has arrived in Hong Kong and discovers the source that leads to Hollow Earth. He takes a deep breath and fires a blast aimed at the ground. The blast charges an axe lying there. Maya and her crew try to shoot Kong down in the midst of the mayhem, but he grabs their ship and crushes it in his paw. After that, he dives into the portal, followed by Nathan, Eileen, and Gia. Kong grabs the now-charged axe and prepares to face Godzilla in round two. They wreck skyscrapers and ruin the city, but Kong retaliates by bringing the axe down on Godzilla. Kong manages to put Godzilla down hard with one swing because his blue flame has no effect on it. Godzilla, on the other hand, jumps back up and uses his foot to knock Kong back down. He screams in Kong's face, but Kong remains obstinate and screams back. Godzilla decides to spare him and begins walking away. Meanwhile, the trio is taken to Walter, who intends to pit Mecha Godzilla with the actual Godzilla in order to establish humanity's control over the monsters. Unfortunately, Ghidorah's mind takes over just as Ren initiates the connection to Mecha Godzilla. Walter is killed by Mechagodzilla's claw, while Ren is electrocuted by the override. The metal beast climbs to the surface and pursues Godzilla, gradually outstretching him with its strength and more powerful heat blast. When Gia detects a slowing of Kong's heartbeat, Nathan uses the Apex vehicle to deliver a strong and powerful charge enough to revive Kong. When Kong wakes, Gia informs him that Godzilla is not the enemy. He grasps the situation and prepares to combat Mechagodzilla before it can strike Godzilla with the fatal blow. Kong swats the enormous robot with his axe, and Godzilla enters the fight. Godzilla uses his fire breath to charge Kong's axe, and the giant ape begins chopping Mechagodzilla's limbs off before tearing its head off and displaying it as a trophy. Madison reunites with Mark after the incident, and he meets Bernie, who invites him to join the show to discuss further Apex and Monarch cover-ups. Godzilla then stands and stares at Kong, who surrenders his axe as a show of peace. Before Godzilla returns to the sea, the giants exchange glances as worthy adversaries. In Hollow Earth, Nathan and Eileen established a new research center, which Kong has adopted as his new home. He continues his friendship with Gia and goes about the land, where he is now once again the king. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.